Good afternoon, everyone. We are here in the beautiful, beautiful garden of Judy Ridgeway. Judy Ridgeway used to work for the City of Campbell River Recreation Department for over 30 years and has always had a massive passion for gardening. And we're going to take you for a little tour around Judy's garden so she can point out all the highlights of her garden. We're going to go through the gate now into her fish pond garden, which is a personal favorite of mine. Judy has tons and tons of stuff planted all the way around the edges of this amazing garden. I wouldn't even begin to know the, some of the names of them, but I'm sure if we asked Judy, she would because she knows the names of every plant I've ever shown her. swoop around this way and then you'll get to see the highlight of the garden which is the fish pond. It's pretty breezy here today you can see all the grasses in the pond are blowing and the pond Judy did you bring out any food? I did. Excellent so Judy's gonna feed the fish so that we can see them all come to the top. How many fish do you have in your pond Judy? Oh I have no idea. A two really large koi. Here they come right now. They're over here. And then, I don't know, tons and tons. And in the winter, they go to the bottom of the pond, don't they? They do. They go down and they hide underneath the grasses and they can hibernate. One of my favorite colors of azalea. I have one of these in my own yard. It's actually much larger than this, but uh, the color is just so eye-catching. Take you for a little walk on the trail around the pond now. Being in this garden of Judy's kind of reminds me of being out in the forest with all the extra lovely additions. So how many years ago did you create this pond garden, Judy? I think it was about six years maybe, six years ago. Nice. And what do you have to do in the spring to keep the pond um, like moving and clean? And is it, it a lot of work? It, it's really not. But at initially, at the very beginning of the spring, because these grasses that you see here, they they're about out to about here by the time the spring comes. So I and they're all brown and dead and kind of yucky. So I usually use a rake and I'll just pull them off and open it up a little bit. The lily pads really like the sun, and they don't get the sun if I don't get rid of some of the leaves. And you didn't make your daughter get in there in their chest waders this year? Not this year. She lucked out this year. I did it with a rake. What a nice little sitting area this is. Judy, you were telling me earlier that you usually come out here and have your morning coffee. I do. So lovely. This is my first actual endeavor in gardening, was this bed here. And it was huge. It went all the way back to the fence over there. And I, I just became monstrous and way too much work. So I've decided I'm cutting it back and I'm by about a third. So I have in the back there, I have all these dandelions and some viruses. Any of you would like any, let Karen know because I will gladly let you pick some up before we get rid of them all. me this wheelbarrow over 30 years ago as a Mother's Day gift because we always bought each other crazy things like that and it served us very well until it didn't and so it's been lying in a grass pile for years so I tore it out and I filled it with dirt and decided it would make a lovely little garden for my flowers just before I go into my vegetable bed. Nice job. So my strawberry boat has uh, quite a few strawberry plants around the outside and then on the inside I sprinkled in a mixture of flower seeds. 
I'm not quite sure what's in there, but I know there's some Cosmos and I don't know what, a Marigolds and a few other things. So hopefully they'll all come up nice. My raspberry forest produces gazillions of berries every year. And I, I do try to thin it out, but it, it just grows with a vengeance. So this is my bean, beans and kale. I, they're bush beans. So I usually do full beans here, but this year I'm changing it up. And I'm beans in and give them a try. Um, one thing I do battle in this garden is buttercup. I have horrendous buttercup in here and it's just a nightmare to get rid of. And horsetail. But the horsetail is manageable. These are Egyptian walking onions and they're pretty cool because what happens is this bulb here opens up into a great big flower and then it, the whole plant bends over and wherever the flower lands it grows another onion plant. Well, this is my uh, mainly blueberries and some raspberries over here. I have 11 blueberry bushes in this tiny little spot and they're all very loaded right now with berries. So I'm hoping to get another good crop this year. And then I have other things planted in and amongst my berries. This looks like peas here, Jude. Yep. Yeah. Peas and carrots behind and garlic. My garlic's doing better now. So is my asparagus now that I've given it a talking to. Told it I was ripping it out if I didn't get more than three and I've already had seven. Nice. <laughs> you sure have a huge variety of vegetables in this garden, Judy. It must be so great to be able to sort of feed yourself from your yard. Uh, I do freeze and can a lot. This is a beautiful tree, Judy, with like really interesting flowers on it. Can you tell me what kind of tree this is? It's a horse chestnut. And it'll get chestnuts on it, but they're they're not edible, they're bitter. Walnut tree. My husband and I planted this tree when my dad passed away many, many years ago in memory of him. And it has taken off and it produces gazillions again of walnuts. So here's something, Judy, you usually teach me about gardens. I'm going to teach you something today. I know these are called bachelor's buttons, and I just read the other day that you can actually eat the flowers on these. You can put them in a salad, and they'd be pretty and apparently quite tasty. So this is my little makeshift greenhouse. It works quite well. I have uh, peppers and tomatoes, lots of tomatoes, cucumbers, and I have watermelon, cantaloupe, and then I just planted some pole beans in there as well. So do you ever go to the grocery store in the summer, Judy? Yeah, unfortunately, I still have to. <laughs> but it looks like you've uh, really created some great food self-sufficiency. This is my shade garden. This is my newest garden that I've just started. And it's got my rain chain in the corner over there. A nice place to sit in the summer when it's really hot out. I've got all this wood piled up there for my fire pit. Doesn't look that attractive, but it is a little haven and, an, and a, sort of like a condo building for all the beneficial bugs and the creatures that we need in our garden. This is my herb garden. It has a few other things in it, as all my garden beds do. Uh, it's got two peach trees. And uh, at the very end there, it has a lovely Miss Kim lilac that my friend gave me. So. This peach tree right here is one that I brought back from my father-in-law's place. It uh, had been dug out of the ground and left lying on the ground all winter. And in the spring it was full of blossoms. So they brought it, they brought it here, stuck it in the ground, and it has never ceased to just have an abundance of peaches every year. They're amazing peaches. My father-in-law and I had a thing about this peach tree. Every year when it, the peaches were ready, he would phone me from Nanaimo and say, Judy, peaches are ready. And he always had the first peach and saved it for me when I got down there. And so when, after he passed away, we moved my mother-in-law up here to Berwick, I uh, would do the same thing with her. I'd take her the very first peach off the tree. This garden's my fun little fantasy kind of garden. I put all my little collectible things in here. I have a fairy garden 
with uh, all kinds of little things that people have made for me and that I've purchased. Um, I made the little pottery fairy house and my friend Paul made me the little stone one. And it's just filled with all kinds of fun little plants and little mementos. So thank you very much, Judy, for letting us come and stroll through your garden. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much for coming, Karen.